Hello out there, this is Cammy White and you're listening to Rushdown Radio. Hey guys, welcome to the Rushdown Review for Sword and Fairy Together Forever for the PlayStation 5. Now, I have been waiting for this game for quite some time. I have heard about this series a long time ago, but I had noticed that none of the games were actually translated in English. The very first game that was officially translated in English was Sword and Fairy 6. Unfortunately, that particular game was not the best impression for this series because it was very glitchy. Um, I think one of the issues they have with that game is that they were trying to do 3D for the first time and it didn't translate very well and the game was a glitchy mess. I was going to review it, but it just wasn't, I didn't think it was a really good way to like showcase this series in a good light. So I just felt like it wasn't advantageous to even review the game, but I was still hopeful for this series. Because I felt, I heard so many good things about it and I was so excited that they actually had this um, reveal trailer in 2019 because they're making a partnership with NVIDIA because they're going to help them with uh, ray tracing and just like graphical fidelity and just like making the game more of a triple A experience. So I was really excited when I started. I'm like, oh God, this is so great. But I was also cautious. I was like, okay, sometimes they make these demo trailers come out and then the actual final product doesn't look nothing like this. So I was a little skeptical. I'm like, okay, is the game going to look this great? Because this looks incredible. And I was just really optimistic but very cautious about it because i didn't want to get my hopes up too high and i didn't want to just you know feel like oh it would be cool if this game looked like that actually in real life but to my surprise it actually does aside from that little content let's just get right into the review for this game all right let's talk about the actual storyline the story starts off with our protagonist ching su yu she is the towers of the ming shu set Taoists are people who, through martial arts and meditation and living harmoniously with the spirits, are able to extend their lifespans through cultivation and they're also able to get supernatural abilities. So basically they're kind of like the protectors of peace and harmony within the realms of the human world. Now one day this little boy is captured by this big ass eagle and he's like, oh my god, I gotta go save it. So she goes and then she saves the little boy and she's like, what is so special about this young little boy? Why is this this crazy creature trying to get them? And also the spirits, if they go wild and start committing sins like killing people and stuff, they become things called vicious beasts. And vicious beasts usually are captured and taken to the heaven prison. There's like a whole like big block of like a whole bunch of like crazy big creatures in the heaven prison right now and for some reason a lot of them are coming out of the prison to the human world which is really weird but that's not how things are supposed to go the heaven prison keeps them there so they won't go into the human world and wreak havoc then one day she finds this like really like ominous apple that's just beaming with like uh, spirit energy and she's like what is this apple and then she's like not sure about it. so she keeps it away for a while and then one night out of nowhere this um heaven demon comes in and she's trying to steal the little boy away from um ching su so a fight ensues and the apple actually turns into one of the heaven guards she's actually um a sword guardian from heaven and he's there to pretty much protect the little boy and stop whatever she's trying to do and we find out more information about him and his purpose and we find out that he's actually a demigod pretty much and he has no real like connections to the human world he's actually supposed to even be there like he actually should be in heaven right now but because his mission failed when he was trying to capture one of the heaven demons earlier and kill them he has to stay in the human world now because his mission is to find out why they're there and why they're trying to find his little boy and also He's trying to find out why his sword was taken in the first place. His sword is a connection to himself and the sword can go through different um, realities. So the sword he has is pretty special too. But since he doesn't have the sword anymore, he's losing energy and spiritual energy, unfortunately. So in order for him to stay in the human world, he needs to make a contract with the Taoist in order to stay here because he's losing spirit energy every day. The fact that he doesn't have his sword with him anymore. And he makes a contract with uh, Shing Tzu, who now becomes um, entwined with him by symbiosis. So they're pretty much sharing spiritual energy at this point. And the more she cultivates her own spiritual energy, the more spiritual energy he'll get as well. So that's kind of how he stays in the human world and he's able to get there without his sword. His sword is really, really important in the story. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much trying to figure out like what's going on in the um, human realm 
why are these crazy mad like creatures coming from the heaven prison why are the heaven demons coming here to the human world as well like there's so many why questions also the heaven demons are pretty much like fallen angels i guess that's a pretty good like caption of what they are um they were once um deities in heaven but then they broke some laws and some sins and they became reduced down to demons but they're still heaven demons so yeah i think the concept of heaven is kind of cool it definitely reminds me of like fallen angels pretty much uh, but yeah we're trying to figure out why are they coming here for this little boy why is this boy so little special and we do find out that the young boy is super powerful and special because he's able to make communions with one of the um deities in heaven that are really really high ranked so they use him as a medium to be able to talk to him pretty much so and it'll have so a lot more powers as well that you find out throughout the story i think the story is really good there's a lot of twists and turns in it I do enjoy all of the Chinese lore and the Chinese mythology that they put in this game. I thought it was really well done, of course. Um, and it really makes it, it's a really cool adventure. I thoroughly enjoyed the story for this game. Because it's like, at first it seems predictable, but it definitely makes some really cool shifts in there. And some things happen. There's a lot of intrigue. Of course, some, a little bit of politics can fall because when you have like different people with different um motivations and stuff you're definitely gonna have that problem and all the characters have such good character development like shu wu is like this like angel figure like he's not really like he's not human so he doesn't have a lot of like he doesn't understand like human customs and human like um social norms and stuff so like throughout the whole game we're pretty much kind of teaching him like hey this is how this works and this is how that works that's kind of fun especially with um Ching Shu, she's super, super like conservative. Like the whole game, she's very conservative. I'll put it like that. And the game definitely does a good job of giving us a snapshot of like how Chinese culture is and the Chinese social norms. Like for instance, he was holding her hand. Like no, you can't hold my hand in public. Like we can't do this. And I'm like, wow, you just holding your hand, girl. But yeah, he can't do that. Your your husband and wife. Like there's really strict codes about like. Um, public space of affection, things like that, which of course throughout the game, they kind of like soften. She softens a lot of that stuff later, but like in the very beginning, Ching Su is very conservative and very just like, we cannot be out here just acting all crazy and stuff, which I appreciate because she's definitely a character with a lot of complexity to her. And I think the whole cast does as well. And I think that it was a really good adventure. I think they did a really good job of writing each character. Of course, there's some tropey stuff that happens in the game, but nothing that's too egregious. But I think they did a good job of giving each character some depth and like motivation and purpose behind why they're doing the things that they're doing. And all the characters definitely changed over the course of the game, which I thought was really good. I think Zhu Wu probably had the biggest transformation because he came from a blank slate pretty much. And now he's like, mostly a uh, somewhat human-ish he's more human than he was before when it first came first started all right let's talk about the gameplay so first of all this is a um action rpg very similar to stuff that you play like the tail series or star ocean i would say it's more closer to star ocean than any other game probably or the um the Yi series it's very close to that as well so you're given four characters um each character has their own distinct style you have a mage you have a archer you have of course your heavy sword user which is shu wu and then you have your of course your quick sword user which is ching shu um each one has their own different abilities um ching shu she's a summoner so she has like different summon animals that she comes out and do like different attacks um mu ching she is our she was it? it's a theology i think that's how you pronounce it but it's pretty much magic and she's our magic user she's like long range and stuff she's really fun to play with i love playing with her she's probably one of the better i think this game is a good better job of magic usage as far as actually combat's concerned than a lot of other games do enjoy that a lot um yo song is our archer and he's really fun he's like poison and like he's like more of a saboteur type of character he has like you know stats um he has uh, debuffs and poison and stuff like that just the status stuff to like hurt the enemy which is fun as well and then let's see zhu wu he's like your standard heavy sword user um nothing really special usually just like he has a lot of um area of effect swords attacks stuff like that but he doesn't really have anything really super special about him he's just definitely like a power tank character which 
it's kind of fun i really really enjoyed the combat for this game like it's so fast paced and the game even opens up even more once you get all the characters and you're able to switch them out whatever you want now there are some parts of the game where you can't switch like there's some um story battles where you can't switch the character after this play with the character they give you which makes the game a little harder because there are some boss fights that would probably be much easier if i had the choice to pick the character i want to play with also of course we want to talk about just like basic fighting stuff so you have your basic um melee attacks which are your, like your triangle and square buttons then you have your special attack and you can jump also you have up to eight um skills or eight attacks depending on the type of character you have so of course like um mui ching who's our spellcaster she has like eight spells she can put on her she can also buff her own attacks to be different um elements as well so yeah and then everybody else has had like own different skills and stuff so yeah everyone is pretty unique in this game and definitely useful also there are double team attacks that you trigger through i think you do the combo correctly or i'm not i wasn't really super understanding of how you trigger the double team attacks like I, i'll be honest i definitely didn't know i think it's a certain combination of attacks you do or the sequence or something like that but i wasn't super well definitely didn't know how to do it i just kind of it kind of like happened and i kind of pressed the button there are a lot of quick time events and they do happen during a lot of boss fights so be prepared for some quick time events we haven't seen quick time events really in a long time like that mechanic has probably been almost um man we haven't had a lot of games with quick time events in a long time so it was definitely a throwback seeing them but they were pretty fun too like i think the quick time events this game were well used they weren't overly used in the game like they were definitely used sparingly but they were definitely for like effect and like just you know keeping the pace of the fight just give you more interest in the fighting too so i thought that was really cool um i will say that there are some camera issues when you're fighting sometimes depending on where you are a lot of times it's definitely for a boss fights um they have like the more of a fixed camera type of thing so sometimes if you're trying to like look in certain directions there might be a tree in front of you it makes it kind of hard to see so yeah camera can be a hindrance at time but it's easy it's a definitely a, a adjustable thing you can definitely fix it a lot easier so but yeah i definitely enjoyed the battle system um, i think the boss fights are definitely the highlights of the combat a lot of the regular fights in the game are just kind of okay but the boss fights are really well done there's they range from being pretty easy to why is this so hard like why is this boss fight so difficult <laughs> like and i like the fact this game definitely has a range it doesn't have like a really like crazy um difficulty spike until like maybe towards the middle of the game there are some boss like why is this boss fight so hard i did notice that fighting like humanoid boss fights are always harder than everyone else because i feel like for some reason the humanoid boss fights they don't for some reason they, they take damage weirdly like they just take hits they're like like damage sponges they just take them like right now i'm just slashing her away and it's like she's still walking she's still able to attack she's still able to like make moves and stuff like the hits are not really like right on her i'm even attacking her pretty much and that's one thing to make this game a lot harder like these boss fights with humanoids are always difficult for some reason but yeah definitely enjoyed the fighting in this game um we are fighting in actual combat you don't have access to all of your um items so that's something to be really aware of um every item has a small limit so like say for instance you have like five of this thing like maybe you have like 20 of something when the actual fight you only you only have access to five of them or nine or however many they give you whatever particular item it is so that kind of sucks too like i was about like 55 or something i had but i can only use like nine inside of a battle so yeah just be mindful that you definitely have to be really conscientious about your um usage of items in battle i also will say that locking on to enemies can sometimes be a little hard um, i know at some points you can lock on to them but sometimes attacking them when you're locked on doesn't actually work as intended so that can sometimes be a little challenging depending on the fight you're having but for bigger enemies that's no use not even an issue it's usually for smaller enemies that trying to lock on can definitely be a task and a half and especially for more humanoid um boss fights you have in this game like those fights definitely need the most accuracy than any other fight because they're so small and your hits have to hit them so yeah definitely want to talk about the lock on system you actually give another attack too which is kind of like this summon 
and it's kind of similar to final fantasy 13 where you take control of the actual summon spirit and you're able to attack for a limited amount of time and yeah i really like this little little tidbit of the game because i haven't seen summons used like this in a while i always thought this was a kind of a cool thing to do i think final fantasy is probably one of the best examples of how this works um but yeah it's really cool you get to slash around with a brand new character and then once your timer goes down you get to do like a super awesome flashy attack which is even more cool so yeah this game has a good variety of attacks and just stuff like that you only get one summon per character too as well so overall, I think the combat for this game is really strong. It's really fast paced. It's really well executed. There are small, small issues for certain parts for the combat, but overall, it's really well done. Um, probably one of my favorite battle systems I've played in a long time. I like the fact that every character is very unique and have their own individual like style to them. And it actually makes it advantageous to switch up and play with other characters while you're actually playing. And sometimes they make you switch up too. So it's really important to get used to everybody because you will at some point have to play with everybody throughout the game. So really like that a lot. Oh, I forgot about the dodging system. I forgot I didn't even talk about that. So you're able to dodge and if you dodge correctly, you get buffs after that, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of like a sort of like a um what is it called uh sort of like a bullet time but not quite because the game does slow down when you actually do it successfully and after you slow down you get like a, a buff and every character has their own individual buff they get from a successful dodge so it's kind of cool and also every character has a super cool cinematic attack they get towards the middle part of the game all of them have an individual one they all look really cool this is actually my favorite one though because he's just cool in general all right, let's talk about other mechanics. So I do want to talk about um, the UI for a second. Um, I thought the UI for this game looked so pretty. I love the menu screen and how it looks. It looks so pretty and just, oh, I love the way it looks. Um, this game definitely has your usual stuff when it comes to like your equipment. Um, you get, of course, your different equipment parts. Um, you can forge equipment or you can buy it depending on what you want to do. I did notice that it was better to like buy a coin most of the time but you actually get a lot of stuff throughout the game just you know exploring too so it's not in the beginning it can be a little difficult to get new equipment but towards the middle part you start getting a lot of stuff just handed to you so that's always good also the spirit systems i didn't get at first which now i understand fully so you get like up to i think the standard for this game is four spirits and you get other spirits you can find throughout like during different side quests of the game so there's every spirit has their own buff they give you or different abilities so some um spirits will give you extra experience through battle some will um, buff your attack power some will uh, increase your defense all of them do something different in order to get more out of those particular buffs you have to just feed them different uh, spirit foods of course you get that throughout the game exploring and you can actually buy some you can actually pet the uh, spirits too. I thought it was so adorable. Like that's so cute. You can pet them. You get so you get a, a good amount of spirits. If you want to get extra ones, you can get them through the different quests. There are a lot of quests in this game. Just want to throw it out there as well. Like there is, if you like doing side quests, this game has plenty of side quests for you to do. So yeah. All right. So another important feature of this game is that the ability system. So every ability that you're able to use during battle is tied to a button so you can map it to different ones you need. You get up to eight. So you uh, press R2 and then you press the corresponding button that is for that particular attack. You can set up to eight attacks. Um, you get quite a few attacks, especially towards the um, middle part of the game to the end. So yeah, you have like over like 15, 16 attacks you can um, select through and then you just map them whatever button you want. So that's pretty fun. Um, so I found myself sometimes like I wish I had more slots because there was like I wanted more abilities to be mapped but unfortunately you only have eight spots so that kind of sucked a little bit oh yeah I did want to talk about the other aspects of the game just a little miscellaneous stuff so like I said earlier there's a lot of side quests in the game all the side quests give you experience and money which is really cool especially in um, the early stages of the game we don't get a lot of experience from monsters so it's really fun to be able to do those side quests to get money and stuff because things are really expensive in this game. So yeah, you definitely need to uh, make money quickly. Also, there's mini games. It's like this card game you can play as well. Also, you can cook. And cooking in this game kind of works like other games where you cook and you get like different debuffs. or no, Not debuffs. You get a whole bunch of buffs for a select amount of time. Um, I think most of the time with this game, it's like 30 minutes you get. So yeah. 
Um, overall, my overall feelings for this game, um, visually, this game is so gorgeous. Like, it's such a pretty game. I enjoyed the environments. I enjoyed the level design. I enjoyed the towns you went to. Everything felt so cool. I like little, like, events like this. Like, this is one of the sequences in the game where you're actually riding on your sword, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I just think this game, I'm really bad at this, so I'm going to crash a lot. But, yeah, like, I really enjoyed the variety of different gameplay types of this game. Like, you get to swim in certain parts. Um, yeah, it's just really fun varied um experiences varied gameplay experiences i think they did a great job overall with this game um there are some glitches in the game which i have to address because they kind of um weren't that fun like i remember this one boss fight that was fighting um so you can um quick return to the fight you could pretty much rematch the boss fight if you lose and one time i rematched the boss and for some reason the boss had multiple versions of himself like it was like i was fighting one usually but then when i restarted it i had to fight two for some reason and that was so i think that was that definitely was a glitch so stuff like that and there was one party game where my character was not able to move correctly and she ended up like flying backwards through the wall like it was one of those really bad glitches and then we was in the boss fight so yeah stuff like that still kind of hinders this game a little bit there are some really weird glitches and there's some glitches with the, some of the cutscenes too like they'll play super slow but the audio will be off don't know what happened with that um yeah i noticed that the end game like runs at a really good 60 frames especially on ps5 like it's running extremely well but the cutscenes sometimes run at like 30 frames per second it's kind of weird um but yeah the end game graphics are gorgeous sometimes the end game cutscenes look better than actual like pre-rendered ones but yeah overall game is gorgeous um the music is pretty good it's very traditional chinese music um nothing really crazy going on with the music in this game it does fit the atmosphere really well so i'm not going to fault it for that it's very true to you know those cool high fantasy chinese movies which is probably one of the reasons why i want to play is because i really love those type of movies a lot like i think one of my favorites is still um storm riders is one of my favorites today oh that in the duel if you if everyone's watched the duel you know that good movie is sick so yeah that's one of the reasons why i want to play this and yeah overall i think this is a really good game this is a really good jumping point for them and i hope they improve with like some maybe some programming stuff they can fix some like some quality of life stuff they can do and they can just like overall just like hash out those little kinks in the game because they can be jarring for people who are not used to seeing stuff like that like there's some really weird glitches in this game kind of like but that's i won't say but that's the level glitches but they can be like what happened here who qa this game so yeah but overall really great amazing game i think it's on i think it's 40 bucks right now which i think is a great price um my playthrough was 25 hours i didn't do a lot of the side quests i did some of the side quests that were more story driven side quests but if you do all side quests and just try to like 100% this game, it will probably run you about maybe 50 hours, probably max, I would say. Yeah, maybe like 50, 60 hours. If you want to do every single thing and get everything and do everything, yeah, you'll probably end up with that. But yeah, that's my review for Sword and Fairy Together Forever. I love this game. This is probably one of my favorite games that came out this year. It is a gorgeous game. It has a great story, great acting. Um yeah just overall just a really pretty game a really fun game to play um some really cool stuff i learned i think like i learned a lot from playing this game actually because i didn't know a lot about chinese mythology so i was definitely gonna crash course in that and just getting a lot of crash course about just like chinese customs and norms and stuff like that was really fun too yeah, it's definitely a very informational and educational game outside just being entertaining as well all right, so what do you guys think of Sword and Fairy Together Forever? Are you going to purchase it? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to wait for it goes on sale? What is your deal? Let us know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, share. This game is for the PlayStation 4 and it's on PC. I played it on PC. I played it on my Steam Deck. Wasn't that great on Steam Deck. I think the most optimal way to play it would probably be PS5 or PS4 Pro. So yeah, just want to throw it out there. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to this review. Um... Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.